Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today it's a very exciting day because I have an all new loco from Rapido and it's the one that we've all been waiting for. The Rapido Lion has finally arrived. It's been a very long time coming, but at long last it has been delivered. And here it is. This is the Lion on its own. It's not in the tip fill pack or anything. I understand that those have been delayed a little bit. They're still going to be a while. But Lion herself is finally here. And she's available at an RRP of £179.95. Or at the retailers, you can find them discounted slightly to £152.96. Obviously, for a tiny loco, that is a lot of money, that's for sure. But obviously, Lion is a small locomotive, yet she still has a lot of detail and complexity, which presumably accounts for the cost of these things. Now, last year, when Hornby released their Lion locomotive, I did a review of that loco, sort of as a loco in its own right. And that's what I'm going to do today with Rapido's Lion. I'm going to review this on its own, free from any comparison with the Hornby one, just to be fair. And then next week, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do a full comparison between the two locos. I'll talk about the pros and cons, and I'll tell you which one I recommend if one of them does happen to come out on top of the other. For now, though, let's take a look at the Rapido Lion. I've heard great things about these. Let's find out if they are true. Here we go. Right off the bat then, the first thing that I really like about the Rapido Lion is that Rapido have made it possible for we the customer to buy the Loco on its own. You don't have to buy £75 of coaches or wagons just for the privilege of buying the Loco. Because that's what Hornby did with their Lion of course, you couldn't buy the Loco on its own, you had to buy it with the coaches which you, the customer, may or may not want to buy. It's the kind of sleazy, money-grabbing behaviour that I'm sure we could all do without. And thanks to Rapido, we can do without it, because here is the Loco just on her own, saving me some money and giving me the choice to buy just the Loco, if that's what I want to do. Anyway, let me show you the end of the box. So the product code for this is 913001. It is the Liverpool and Manchester Lion in the 1930s condition, and this is just the DC slash silent version, although I think there are sound versions on the way, although I believe those have been delayed. Notice the era as well, this is in 1930s condition, they've also got a 1980s condition and also a tip filled version of course which you will see later on when I review that one, fingers crossed when they get here. Anyway, there's nothing else really to see on the box which is great news because I'm desperate to get into this and take my first look. So let's see if we get the loco revealed or just a, a sheet of foam, it's quite a tight lid this one. Ah, it's just a, a sheet of foam, so the suspense continues. Okay, Lion, owner's manual. Read this first. All right, blimey, will do. If you don't, Lion might bite. Okay, that's a good persuasion. Well done. Okay, welcome to the manual. All right, so we've got a prototype history, first of all. Feel free to pause and read this if you'd like. Unboxing your model. So it seems to be standard packaging, although it does say to grab the loco by the boiler and not the coupling rods, which I think is good advice because it is tempting to do that. Coupling loco and tender. Looks like that needs to be done on a flat surface, which is fine. Couplings. These come with standard tension lock couplings, although they said there's no room to put one on the front. Okay, fair enough. And in the second paragraph, it does say that there's a hook on the tender that's designed to be compatible with Liverpool and Manchester railway coaches. They haven't used the word Hornby here, which I suppose is a dirty word to Rapido, but uh, that's what they mean. So that's great. I was wondering about that. Yes, that's very good. Every loco needs to be properly run in. Yeah, that's fine. Crank screw covers. Interesting. Once you're happy with the performance, take the circular crank screw covers out of the poly bag Add a tiny dab of glue and then stick them over the crank screws to hide the screwdriver slot. Very interesting. Quite interesting that they didn't fit those though. Are these not tested at the factory first or is there a possibility of damage during transit which could change the performance? Maybe it's the latter. Okay, yeah, analogue, that's fine. I've got a modern controller. Servicing, it's lubricated during assembly, whatever. 
DCC operation, it's got a Next18 decoder socket, that's useful information. They also say it does have a factory fitted speaker, so if you want to chip this with sound, all you need is the right sound decoder, very good. And then we've got stuff about DCC, lifetime limited warranty, and here we go, my word, look at this. Exploded diagram, uh, this is the one we want, 1930s condition. An awful lot of parts, as you will not be surprised to see. Yeah, it's a complex loco, that's for sure. And look at this, a little collage of different photos of the thing in real life. <laughs> I guess Rapido are that confident in how accurate their model is. They don't mind sending detailed photos of the thing with the model itself. Great. All right, very good. I think it's time then to look at the model. Are you ready? Ooh, there it is. I'll tell you what, immediately the color of this loco looks so beautifully subtle. Looking at photos of the real thing, you know, it's a colorful loco, but the colors are not massively saturated. It doesn't jump out at you like a real lion would. And um, yeah, so to see a more subtle rendition of lion is really quite a pleasant change. I like that a lot. Anyway, more on that when it comes out, when I release the lion from its cage. Here's the poly bag then, and there is nothing in here by the looks of it, except for those crank screw covers, I guess. And uh, some of those are still on the sprue, although we've got more than we need. There's a couple of extra ones floating around in there too. So uh, hopefully I won't have any trouble getting those in, although they do look frightfully fiddly little things, don't they? But uh, yeah, we'll do that, no problem at all. I'm glad that these screws won't be visible because that's something I noticed on the product images. Right, here we go then standard sort of blister pack although there is a lot of foam to protect this no more accessories though so everything is pre-fitted to the model which is excellent news let's carefully pull this out then and i'm always more nervous when the instructions have gone through a section about how to unbox the loco because uh, yeah it just makes you wonder doesn't it uh, whether there's anything special to do i don't think so though it's just a case of not damaging the detail and the coupling rods all right, so let's just do this slowly and carefully. Oh my word, look at that. Yeah, straight away, the finish on the firebox looks incredible. I didn't think it looked very good on the product images, quite honestly, but uh, yeah, it does look excellent. There is a problem though. Let me lift this up. Uh, yeah, on the other side, the crankshaft completely loose there. Look at that. Well, that's not right, is it? Now, can I just tighten that screw up and fix the problem? Ah, uh, let me go away and try that. Okay, yeah, I was able to just tighten up that screw, so fortunately, it looks like problem solved. Although, slight question mark over the build quality slash quality control there, because I don't believe that a tight screw could work its way loose, as loose as that, at least, in transit. So, uh, yeah, not ideal. Anyway, the crankshaft issue there has distracted me from the rest of the model, which is absolutely excellent. The weight is really unbelievable. I don't know what this is made of, but it is heavy. The boiler is definitely metal. I think the, yeah, the firebox definitely metal. Running plate, surprise, surprise, metal. The firebox is metal. I don't think the chimney is metal, although the top of the chimney does look like it's real copper, although actually it's not. Yeah, it just looks pretty good. Right, well, I can't wait to get a better look at this loco. Let's have a quick look at the tender, though. Lift this up. And you know what? Even the tender has got a decent amount of weight to it. Yeah, it's quite the weighty tender, this. And yeah, the bulk of the chassis here is also die cast. That's very, very impressive. The wheels are also remarkably free to turn, yet they do still have pickups. It's just the axle-based pickups, so you've got no wiper pickups creating drag in the tender. Although, frankly, the loco is so heavy that I'm sure it could overcome any friction from wiper pickups here anyway. But still, no, that's great. Right, so the loco and tender are presumably the snap-together kind. So let's carefully, well, I'll hold them together for the time being. And uh, I'll put them together on a, a flat piece of track. But yeah, that is gorgeous. The finish is fantastic. The decoration looks to be superb. And the level of detail looks wonderful as well. At the moment, I would say this was well worth the wait. But I'm going to have a much closer look at this in just a second. I will also get it on the scales and then I will show you the various detail. At the moment, I'm more or less lost for words. <sighs> wow. Anyway, a little bit of background on Lion in real life. 
So the Liverpool and Manchester Railway No. 57 Lion was first built in 1838, some nine years after Stevenson's rocket. She was built by Todd Kitson and Laird, and this engine represented a considerable development over the likes of Rocket, now featuring two inside cylinders, much larger 11 by 20 inch ones, which propelled the engine to a maximum speed of 40 miles per hour, which in itself is a, a huge improvement over Rocket. It had double the number of driving wheels, producing around three times the tractive effort at 9.6 kilonewtons. And Lion was actually not alone. She was one of six locomotives as part of an order to the locomotive builders. And she was accompanied by a sister locomotive Tiger, which we've seen on this channel too, both of which were used for working goods trains. The locomotive was modified in 1841 with a better boiler and new cylinders and to accommodate these new parts the locomotive frame was lengthened making this rebuild a considerable change to the original design. Eventually Lion was sold off quite cheaply and she ended up working as a pumping engine at the graving dock facility until 1923 when she was rediscovered, rescued and finally restored. It still exists today under preservation and is in top condition visually, although this restoration did change the appearance of the Lion quite considerably, which is why Rapido are not producing the pre-grouping condition Lion, because that would not look like this and therefore would be inaccurate. So there she is, the tremendous Rapido Lion up close and personal for you. And I think the first thing to do is to unite the loco and tender together for the first time. So apparently just some gentle pressure will achieve this. So let's give that a try. Yeah, there we go. I guess that's it. They are together. And uh, presumably they can be detached by doing the same thing, but in reverse. Anyway, like I say, an incredible looking model. Very, very impressive. The weight though is the most impressive aspect for me. This weighs in at, are you ready, 180 grams. Now the Hornby Lion weighed in at 96 grams, which means that this thing is nearly double. Double, mind you, not plus 10%, 20%, almost double. You get basically twice the amount of model for your money, which is insane. It's the same size, yet it weighs twice as much. And that is, of course, because the entire thing virtually is made of metal. And I think that makes this model pretty decent value at 150 quid. How many models are almost entirely made of model? Made of model, all of them. How many models are almost entirely made of metal these days? Not that many. So yeah, I'm expecting this to be an incredible hauler. Let's move on and look at the decoration then. And as I've already said, the paint job is incredibly nice and subtle. I think most of that comes from the wood effect on the boiler cladding here because they've actually just painted it brown. There's no super noticeable wood texture here. It is just painted brown pretty much as the real thing looks. And you've got the same thing on the side of the firebox as well. Again, the copper cover on top of the firebox looks pretty much exactly as the real thing does. It's quite a subtle shade, yet it's certainly glossy and metallic, which is great to see more so than the wood of the rest of the model. So you've got multiple different finishes going on for the different parts, which I think is great. The chimney, I'm not entirely sure whether this top section is made of metal. It's certainly not real brass or anything like that. But um, yeah, it could actually be metal, but it's painted in the same way as the firebox so that it actually matches. I think that is worth saying because there's a bit of unity across this model. And then, of course, you've got the greens, which are on the sides of the cab and on the splashes. Again, it's a relatively subdued green, which looks just like the real line does, which is great to see. It's obviously a very, very complex livery as well. You've got the banding on the boiler, which is very nicely picked out. You've got this very interesting pattern on the side of the cab, which is not a separately fitted part on this occasion. They are just picked out, but that looks fine. Obviously, these splashes look wonderful as well with their gold lining. And then you've got the very surly looking smoke box, which is painted black. But again, it's still got a fantastic finish on it which makes it look like a, a very high quality model. Let's take in some of the details then, and we'll start down at the bottom where there is a fully detailed firebox complete with riveting, that looks fantastic. The Loco's coupling rods are very fine, yet made of metal, and I do like the finish on those parts. Not a completely metal finish, they do look painted, but the color is pretty convincing, I would say. 
The running plate, die cast as it is, has lots of detail on it, including the rivets. Got what is probably a little builder's plate on there as well, which looks lovely. And then above there, you've got the separately fitted springs, which also have a great level of molded detail to them. There is the Lion nameplate, which seems to be separately fitted, although underneath there you'll notice there is quite a large gap between the sections of the boiler, which is a little bit distracting, and that is what I would say about this. In some areas, there is a slight lack of finesse. You've got parts of the details which should be one piece that are split up for reasons of practicality, I assume, and the entire chimney piece looks very separate from the rest of the smoke box, which is a little bit distracting when you notice it. Around the front, you've got separate details on the smoke box, which looks great. Even the cylinders have tiny little separate parts attached to them. It's really amazing to see. The buffer beams have these very sort of strange, would they be rubberized or maybe leather buffers? Yeah, very interesting design on those. And of course, a real chain with a hook on the front, as so many locos from this era had. The cab is an interesting area as well. You've got the safety valve assembly on the top, which is all very fine and separately fitted. You'll notice there is no pressure gauge among the cab controls, and that is correct because that gauge was added in 1952 for the Titfield Thunderbolt film. Obviously, this model is supposed to depict Lion from the 1930s, so it is quite right that there is no pressure gauge here. You can see, though, that there is a water gauge, which has been fully painted, and you've also got the regulator, which is separately fitted and very, very fine. And around the other side, you've got what I assume is a brake or maybe even the reverser or something. Again, a very fine, separately fitted part. I'm almost quite surprised that this loco doesn't have the lights in the firebox, as so many Rapido locos do. But uh, I guess, you know, that would have sacrificed some of the loco's weight. And loco weight is something that Rapido obviously worked very, very hard on with this loco. But this is where the detail stops. Underneath the loco, it is just a, a flat surface without any valve gear modelled. It's fair enough, I suppose, but it was impressive on the Hornby version to see all of the valve gear modelled. No such thing here, unfortunately. The tender is similarly nicely put together. Again, we've got that die-cast chassis, which brings it quite a bit of weight. The finish and the paintwork on this is just marvellous. Yet again, as you can see, beautiful lining around the chassis and the same on the tender body. Nice black lining there, very crisp, looks really excellent. You've also got some very fine separately fitted metal handrails, which are nice and straight with no visible glue. Nice full coal load on this as well. Yeah, that does look removable, although it's not loose or anything, so I'm going to be quite careful about prying that out. And then you've got the water filler cap, which is complete with the separately fitted handle. Little lever on the top, which is separately fitted. And we've also got a metal tender full plate, which I will lower down into position there. And look, even that's revealed some other details. Yeah, it's really quite lovely. And then around the back, you've got the NEM coupling, which uh, does look quite large on this thing, it must be said. You can understand why Hornby opted against this, but obviously it's an M coupling. You can pull it out if you want to, and then you've got a hook which can accept the Hornby style chain couplings, which means Rapido have the best of both worlds. This loco can couple to absolutely anything, which is great. Massive thumbs up for that. So, in summary then, beautiful looking loco, subtle paint job, absolutely tons of detail, maybe one or two issues in the finesse, but nothing truly major, and an awful lot of weight to it, uh, much, much more than I was expecting. So, a massive thumbs up so far. Now, though, is the part I'm nervous about. How is this going to run? Is it going to crawl well? Does it have a quality mechanism? Is it going to be reliable on the track? I've already had a bit of a scare with the coupling rods. I hope that that issue is sorted out now. Let's get it onto the track and let's find out. So there she is down onto the track, the beautiful Rapido Lion, looking absolutely marvellous, but how does it run? Well, I've already filmed the first performance test and I will not reveal how that went for now. I'll show you that in just a second. Up next, I did a disassembly of this to look at the mechanism and that's what I'm going to talk about now. Now, with these smaller locos, because of their size, often corners have to be cut in terms of mechanism, literally to get things into it, particularly in terms of accessibility for maintenance and such. 
but really that's not happened with this loco from Rapido. I'm actually a huge fan of the mechanism and the design. It's really, really good. So all of the tender wheels pick up through the axles, which does have the downside of needing plastic insulating axles, but the wheels don't wobble too much. And on this occasion, that design makes sense because it does reduce drag and therefore the tender won't take away very much from the loco in terms of traction, which leaves all of its pulling power available for other rolling stock, which is great. You've got this kinematic style drawbar between the loco and tender, which is very neat and tidy. There's no wires visible or anything like that. And of course, it's very simple to connect and disconnect the loco this way. So I love that design. The rear loco axle doesn't have any pickups on it, which I guess is what it is. It also has a slight springing to it as well, which I think is a great idea because that will keep it on the track without taking any of the loco's weight. Again, leaving all of the loco weight over the driving wheels. It's also very serviceable. You can get to the driving axles without too much trouble. There's a few steps involved though. So first of all, there's the rear screw, which allows this die cast weight to be removed, which reveals the rear axle and its proper bearings. As you can see, look at that. This rear axle does need to be pulled out though before we can proceed. Then there are four screws, all the screws you can see, including the two at the front, which are recessed. And this allows the base keeper plate to be removed. I say base keeper plate, it's actually more of a large die cast chunk, which has the plunger pickups installed into it. So again, nice low drag solution for the loco pickups. And these connect to the loco via these little pads. And then on the loco itself, there are the spring loaded contacts. The driving wheels have proper bearings on them. That's great, what a high quality feature. And yet we've just got one driven axle, which does keep the mechanism simple, but it means that the fragile coupling rods on the outside of the loco are actually used to drive one of the driving wheel sets. So be very careful with those. Now this is as far as I dared to go with the disassembly because to go any further I think the wheels would have to have been removed. But I do know that there's a quality coreless motor inside here which does have a flywheel on it. And of course because I can get to the gears here you are able to lubricate the gear train without any problems. Now the instruction said the tender body is just held on with clips and that's true but it is a little bit tough to undo this meaning that a bit more force than feels right is necessary. A pity that screws couldn't have been used here but I managed to get it off and look even this body is packed with weight. Don't even know why they needed to do that. I guess the loco's got pulling power to spare so that it doesn't matter and this way the tender is more stable. There's the next 18 sockets, lots of room for a decoder there as well, and the speaker is beneath there. So all nice and tidy, pre-fitted speaker, what a great design. So there you have it, the mechanism, top notch really, really nicely put together, easy to service, easy to access, not over complicated, makes a lot of sense. So with that, let's move on to the performance section and I'll reveal how this loco ran. Moment of truth then, does the loco actually work? I've got my fingers crossed because I've heard great things but I'm yet to see them. So here we go, forwards direction and a little juice. Ooh, yes. Gosh. There's something very, very smooth about that. And quiet as well. Can you hear that? No? Exactly. There's no noise at all. It's just literally snaking along silently. Now, I did say silent on the box. So I guess they really meant it because it is silent. And this hasn't even been run in yet. It is going to get the full running in before I sort of cast any final judgment on the performance, but it looks marvelous. And it's none the worse the wear for the coupling rod issue that I noticed on the way out of the box. So that's great. Um, what's the gearing like? Let's go past at 50% speed and uh, show you how quick this is. Remember, in real life, the top speed was around 40 miles per hour. So this is 50. Yeah, that looks pretty sensible, doesn't it? And full speed. Yeah, I would say the gearing is very smart there. That's great. And that's uh, a good sign for the crawl as well. What's that like? I'm going to ease this up very gently. Still turning up, still turning up. Oh my word, look at that. A little more maybe. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I know I said I wasn't gonna compare this with the Hornby one in this video, but uh, you won't catch the Hornby one doing that. Oh, that's amazing. 
Oh, how awesome. All right, so performance. What a thumbs up already. Well, I think so anyway. If it, if it has trouble on curves and such, uh, then maybe not. But uh, I can't see it doing. Yeah, that's just mesmerising. I could sit and watch it do that all day, frankly, but I'm going to move the review on, just for, in the interests of time. What's the torque like? Let me put my fingers in front of these odd buffers. Give it 50. Yeah, heavy loco, loads of torque. That's exactly what you'd expect, and quite typical of uh, a cordless motor there. That's very good indeed. Right, well, I think with that then, it is time to run this in. So 50% speed. 30 minutes forwards, then 30 backwards. Let's get this done. Okay, here she goes, first time around the track. Second radius curves, yeah, perfect. No slowing down, in fact, she's going very briskly. Yeah, absolutely marvelous. So, it's looking really good, isn't it? Stable on the track, not cutting out, not slowing down, not derailing, and also capable of a good crawl as well. Not to mention the pulling power, which is just, it's got to be great because that tender is so free rolling and yet the loco is so heavy. I think this loco is going to give much larger locos a run for its money. I really do. And to find out, stay tuned. I'll be back in just a moment after this is fully run in and then I'll hook it up to a load of wagons and we'll see what this thing can do. Well, the Loco's running really nicely, and so I've decided to take this opportunity to fit the little covers that go over the coupling rod screws. And there's a couple of pointers I've thought of which might help you do this, so I thought I would just film it. First of all, be sure to park your Loco so that the coupling rods don't cover up any of the screws on either side, because obviously if you've done one side and then you flip it over and it's covered up, you've then got to wait for the glue to dry before you can turn the wheels and get to the next one. The other thing I'm going to do is very carefully light on its side and just tighten up all of these screws because I had that little scare with the one that was loose in the box and the last thing you want to do is glue something onto these screws and then one of them works itself free which is obviously a complete disaster. Luckily most of these do seem to be relatively tight but it's better to be safe than sorry isn't it. So next Let's pull out some of these little caps, and they may not be symmetrical. In fact, yeah, one side of them has a little dimple in the centre, which is meant to represent, uh, well, where the axle is. So that's got to be exposed. And all I'm going to do is use a needle, apply a little bit of glue to the end of the needle. Let's see if I can show you that without getting glue on the loco. It's really not going to take much at all. And then just blob that onto the end of the screw. Um, doesn't matter if you gunk the screw up with glue because it's never got to come out, hopefully. And then that piece goes right onto the end there. So I'm going to do the rest and then keep this running. All right, that is running in complete. And this Loco, it's a complete joy. There's no other way of looking at it. Perfectly smooth, perfectly reliable gorgeous gorgeous runner it still runs fine now that the sort of covers have been put on there there's not that much clearance between them and the rods so you do need to make sure they are fitted nice and flat and straight but uh, yeah that's what they look like absolutely fine now the slow speed performance was fantastic before but it was having a little trouble sustaining the slowest of crawls so let's see what that's like now i'm going to ease this up in the forwards direction to start with god look at that and it's so smooth even at those speeds. Oh, it's just great, isn't it? And you can't hear any buzzing or motor noise or anything. It's dead silent. Look at that. It's uh, slightly better in reverse, actually. Look at that. I mean, the real thing would have struggled to do that, wouldn't it? Surely. And it's right smooth all the way up to the high speeds. It's just incredible. I have to say this is one of my favourite locos now. It's just such a pleasure to run. It's no trouble whatsoever. I've got no concerns about how long the mechanism's going to last or whether I'm going to be able to service it properly when the time comes. It's just really well done. And for 150 odd quid, uh, it's worth it. You know, I'm happy for Rapido to take that money from me because they've earned it. They've really, really earned it. They've developed a very high quality, well thought out model. 
uh, that looks great as well. I'm just very pleased with that. Okay, next bombshell for you then. The pulling power, it's insane. 0 0.18 newtons. That should allow this to haul 14 coaches on straight and level track. That is thrice the pulling power of Hornby's Lion. Thrice. It's unbelievable. Absolutely crazy. And so I've set up this consist. Not particularly accurate or era appropriate, but I wanted something that would truly demonstrate this loco's abilities. And I think six modern Hornby large coaches are the way to do it. Do you reckon the loco could do that? I don't know. We're going to find out. Do you think the real line could have done that is a better question. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's go and test the couplings. I wonder if they'll be at the right height. Hmm. Rapido. Usually they are. All right. Do you think I can do a nice steady coupling here? Of course I can. Oh, it's just, it's giving me tingles right across my toes. <laughs> yeah, you just couldn't have done that with the Hornby one. It's marvellous. Okay, off we go. Can it shift them? Yes, it can. Look at that. Slightly terrifying. Six coaches. Look at that. It can accelerate them quite powerfully as well. That's marvellous. All right, and we'll see how she gets on up Gordon's Hill in just a moment. I've got some other Era 1 locos for you to look at today. On the middle line, we have, I guess, the opponent to the Rapido line. This would be the Hornby one. And to be fair to Hornby here, yeah, this loco is comparable. And I'm certainly going to do a full comparison video very soon on these two. Each loco has its pros and cons. This one does have some pros over the Rapido one, but... Uh, Performance is not one of them, that's for sure. That's about as slow as this line can go. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for that. I'll do a full comparison pretty soon. And then on the inside line, I've got yet another Era 1 Loco, and that is Tiger, which I kind of prefer to the Hornby Lion, really, because it has some detail differences. It's not a Loco that you can get from Rapido. So uh, actually, this is a Loco that makes a bit more sense from Hornby. Um, but yeah, there it goes with a short coal train. Now, did the Rapido Lion manage up Gordon's Hill? Well, it's certainly going to have a good go. Good luck, love. Let's see what happens. On to the second radius. Oh my God, no slowing down. Up Gordon's Hill. I'm not seeing any loss of traction here, folks. Look at that. That is just ridiculous. Oh, how does it do that? Maybe a slight struggle at the top there, but it's not stopping. That is just insane. When you think that my brand new Hornby 9F couldn't have done that last year, you know, it was slowing down, struggling like anything. And then here comes a little Era 1 Lion locomotive that has got more torque, more power. It's just crazy. Yeah, how did they do that? It really does put other manufacturers to shame. You know, with these larger locos where there's so much more room for weight and a quality mechanism, and yet they don't perform as well as this. That is, it's just mind blowing to me. What a marvelous, marvelous performer. So it is a perfect performer. And you just would not expect that of a loco with so many limitations in terms of size and space and build. It really does make you wonder why all larger locos than this aren't just as good at the very least. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. What a lovely loco. So, it looks great. Marvellous level of detail. Fantastic decoration. Good finish. Lots and lots of features, including a pre-fitted speaker if you want to fit sound. So that will make that process nice and straightforward. It's a fantastic runner. And it's got more pulling power than you could ever possibly require of a loco like this. Well, to say I'm impressed is an understatement. It's been quite a while since I've just been completely happy with a loco, which I know is partly my fault, I am very particular, but locos like this reassure me that being so particular is worthwhile because there are locos that can meet the highest possible standards. And this loco from Rapido is very much one of them. How impressive. And now then some ratings for the new Rapido Lion. And the Loco is superb, and I think the ratings certainly show that. The level of detail is marvellous. The decoration is top-notch, just as a Lion should look, in my opinion. Very, very good choice of colours. Loads of fine details, particularly around the cab area, but you've also got the separate chains. You've got the metal tender fall plate. 
all of the intricate details are there except for underframe detail yeah the loco is missing its valve gear doesn't have any lights or anything and it's missing a little finesse you've got the big gap in the boiler for instance so for these reasons i've knocked it down by one star but the level of detail is very much top notch or quite close to top notch the performance though cannot be faltered this is an incredible runner given the limitations imposed by the size of this loco yeah it's a marvelous runner so beautifully smooth the crawl is fantastic it's got a flywheel so that it accelerates and decelerates smoothly it really is just a five star performer and i'm happy to award it five stars Pulling power, again, it's just ridiculous. It's the same as the Dapol D1, same as a Hornby J15, more than a Backman Class 03 shunter, which is quite a big modern shunter, and it's three times the power of Hornby's at 0.18 newtons. You can just see how many coaches this thing can manage. It's absolutely insane. Probably it's got to be more powerful than the real thing, hasn't it? Mechanism, again, I've had to give this five star. It's a really beautiful design here. You've got pickups on both the Loco and the Tender, very low drag pickups as well, which is important. Very good Loco to Tender coupling, that looks great. Proper bearings on the driving axles, uncomplicated mechanism, and yet you can still access the gears and the axles for cleaning and maintenance purpose. The pickups too. What a great mechanism. Quality, cordless motor as well with a flywheel. Can't fault it, five star. The quality is also insanely high. I mean, the amount of metal on this model is just insane. All of that die cast, I've never known a loco this small weigh this much before. That is great. It's also been assembled to a high standard. There's no visible glue, no wonky details that I noticed, no hiccups in the paint job either. I did just have that issue with the coupling rods though, loose screws from the factory. Again, this Loco's got to run along on these screws. So I feel like if they stay tight while the thing's running, that one that was loose can't have been properly tightened at the factory because just a little jostling in its well-protected packaging uh, just wouldn't have done that. But apart from that, it is well put together, quite delicate. Some of the details are just made of plastic, which makes them quite flimsy. So obviously care is needed here. Value for money then, I have to say, you know, this is an expensive loco, the RRP is £179.95, which is maybe a little bit pricey, I'd give that three star, but at the retailers, £152.96, I have to say that is spot on. That would be a five star price. All that metal, all those features, it's just worth the money, isn't it? So I've split the difference, I've given it four star. It's not a bargain or anything, but it is very reasonable and you do get what you pay for, particularly if your retailer is one that offers the 10 to 15% discount. Yeah, if you can get this for 150 odd quid, it's worth the money, absolutely. A truly high quality model that has been built to last. So that is 8.77 out of 10, very good score, an easy grade of A there, the top grade I can give. And into the logbook we go, where it is fourth place, so well deserved in the top five there, above the Hornby S15 and below the Athern SD60E. If you want a lion, I can highly recommend this one. Well folks, thank you so much for tuning in for yet another review. Uh, this one was well worth tuning in for as well, wasn't it? Uh, the loco, that is. Yeah, absolutely tremendous. And it really makes me wish and pray, hope, that Rapido are going to turn their head to other Era 1 locomotives. Hopefully it's not just the tip field aspect that attracted them. Hopefully they are interested in doing more Era 1 because if they could get a Lion to work this well, I'm confident that they could get other smaller, more complex locos to run at the very least decently and that could open up all sorts of different possibilities. What other Era 1 locos would you like to see? Please comment down below. For now though, that will just about do it for this review, so thank you again for tuning in. One question still remains though, which Lion is better, Rapidos or Hornbys? I'm sure you've got some ideas of what the answer might be, and it's certainly a subjective thing, there's a lot to consider, and I'm going to reveal the answer next week. I'm going to do a full comparison. I am going to take a lot more time to consider the pros and cons of each loco. And then I will come up with my answer and the reasons why I came to that conclusion. So stay tuned to the channel and I will be back with that video in due course. For now though, that was the full review of the new Rapido Lion. Massive thumbs up, affiliate links in the description if you'd like to try one out and support the channel as well. And with that, I'll say thank you again for watching 
and I will see you very soon. All right, cheers, everybody. Take care.